need not to panic, but we need to be smart. Uh, there's a difference between the two. Uh, I got a couple of you joked at me throwing out my elbow to, instead of shaking hands with, with you this morning. But that type of contact is what breaks the cycle. But we just need to be cautious, not fearful. There's a lot, too much panic out there. But we do need to be cautious and, and wise in, in how we go about uh, living our lives. There's, there's not really a way to avoid it. And so all we're talking about is hospital bed capacity, <coughs> period. So when you see events canceled, when you see um, recommendations to um, kind of stay away from each other and not gather together, and I'm not talking about small groups like this, but I'm talking about tens of thousands of people gathering together from all over the country or world, um, we're pretty safe to gather together here in Portland. But what we're talking about is how many hospital beds are available for those elderly and those that are already very sick um, that may need to be hospitalized on a breathing machine. Number of breathing machines, number of hospital beds, that's it. Um, that's all we're talking about. A sharp bell curve up and down. If you did nothing else, if we changed nothing about our lives, you would have a very sharp bell curve up. Everybody that was going to get it would get it. Everybody needed hospitalization would, you know, go to the hospital and then it would come back off the other side. Um, we do think that that would potentially increase the mortality rate because, again, if it were to go above that capacity. So that's what you're seeing from canceling NBA season, canceling SEC tournament, canceling you know things like that where there's large numbers of people gathering together. Um, the best advice literally that any doctor can give to any person, we've been in tons of these briefings, wash your hands for 20 seconds. And I promise you it feels like an eternity. Um, do that regularly, okay? But I mean, actively count in your mind. Warm water, soap. Do it regularly throughout the day. Don't touch your eyes. Don't put your hands in your mouth. It's the same kind of stuff we all learned in kindergarten, okay? I mean, that's how you stop the spread of disease or at least slow it down. Um, those are good common sense measures. So what we're focused on at the state level is the reality of the situation that this is going to spread, that we do need to make sure um, to have our medical facilities available, to have our doctors available, have all the medicine available and machinery available that's needed um, for those that do need that level of care. Um, and then again, to continue to just spread the word like this of wash your hands, be cognizant, that kind of stuff. And if you're sick, don't go to work. And with the opioid epidemic that we have been discussing for years, um, the reason we see such an uptick in overdoses is that they are using fentanyl to mix with other products and like a little ninja blender. I mean, and they're blending it together, you know, by somebody who has no idea how to mix substances. These people have no idea what they're doing and they don't care. But what they do is they put that fentanyl and everything into substances and then they stamp it out in pills that look exactly like the hydrocodone or any of the other drugs that someone might have been addicted to. So when people buy that on the street, they think they're getting the same pill that they've been getting from their doctor, that their doctor may have already scaled them off of or cut them back from because it's no longer medically necessary, but they're still addicted. All of a sudden they have a hot load that will kill dozens of people. And, and we've changed the law, by the way, so that those drug dealers now face homicide charges. But at the same time, it's because somebody's dead. Um, if you've noticed on 65, just in the last couple of weeks, if you go from the Kentucky border down to Rivergate, they've started milling, they've been out there at night, you know, repaving and everything. That is a temporary fix for that section. Um, unfortunately, that section of road has deteriorated to the point um, where they're either going to have to spend tens of millions repairing um, or some multiplication thereof replacing because the long-term plan uh, from Rivergate up to the Kentucky border is to have it you know three lined in each direction I mean that, that's what's needed for that section of road that's what's justified over the next couple of decades um, that's necessary for that and so the the short term is they're going to go ahead and start repairing that so you can get some of those worst sections done um, but that will be a temporary fix so long term we've got to decide to, whether or not to invest the money in that to go ahead and three lane it or invest the money to go ahead and do a, a deep mill and fix on that. We'll have to make some decisions ourselves about people gathering and what that looks like. The time to make those decisions, not when everybody gets sick, it's before they get sick. Uh, in our little community, uh, we love to shake hands and hug each other's necks and, you know, can't do that right now. If you do that right now, you've got a good chance of hurting somebody that has a weakened immune system. That's above the age of 80 that has heart disease, diabetes, respiratory issues. These things concern me and 
I don't want to be the guy that says, no, nah, don't worry about that because it affects us. We've got a couple of nursing homes that's already shut down visitation in our community. The hospitals are stopping visitation. That's wise. I didn't shake anybody's hand when I come in here today. I did that because I love you, mm -hmm. not because I don't like you. And I think that's wise. We've got a lot of big decisions coming up. We've got, I think, I really think the federal government ought to delay the census a little bit. People may not get out and get counted at events because of what's going on. We have a big event coming up April 4th in this community. We put a lot of time and effort and money into planning for it. We'll have to make a decision about it. We'll have to make decisions about Easter egg hunts. We'll have to make decisions Indeed. about the Strawberry Festival, where we bring 35 to 40,000 people into this community and stick them right downtown. That, that's, that's real. And uh, these decisions are not easy, but we're going to continue to figure that out. Let's talk about the good news. I got some good news. Um, city of Portland's been struggling for the last few years when it comes to its sewer system. Man, these guys have worked hard. Our employees have worked hard. City Council, by the way, this is Alderman Drew Jennings right here. He's been involved in this for years. He knows the heartache we went through. A year ago, we had zero taps available. Monday, we had an official letter. We couldn't say anything, but we got the official letter. Uh, they gave us 2,400 plus taps Monday for our community. They also gave us zero restrictions for an entire section around exit 121. That's big news for us. We've got new investment out there. We've got more investment that's looking. That's the place where you're probably going to see some hotels popping up. Um, that's big for our community. 